though it is February 19, 2008, a man named Sean Lansdale recently just was found dead at his home in near Clearwater, Florida, which is pretty close to where he lives, and uh, he was only 39. Uh, he, since 2006, was somebody that opposed the true harms and abuses of Scientology and he had a lot of uh, cuts and went out there by himself to pick it and to uh, do that kind of stuff to flat flag and numerous different places in Florida going against the cult of Scientology and uh, he did this anytime he possibly could and he was very successful at it and Scientology of course fair game to which means trick, sued, lied to or destroyed. Well now he's dead. So at that point when you think about destroyed, think about that for a second. The guy's found dead at his home. Uh, according to the reports it says that he put a hose inside his exhaust pipe and ran this little hose from his vehicle all the way to one of his windows in his house and somehow uh, that's how he killed himself doesn't make a lot of sense to me the guy seemed like a pretty happy guy the last person that told the police that they actually spoke to this man was his uh, landlord and that was in early February not too long ago and the, the landlord man said that he was a, a very happy guy so for him to just decide to commit suicide doesn't make a lot of sense you know, uh, I really don't feel very good about this whole thing that this happened to this man. But, uh, there you go. You guys should definitely check this out, though, on the internet. Look more into the whole situation and research the whole thing. Hopefully, more information will be found out about what really happened. And, uh, we'll get to the bottom of this whole thing. But, uh, Scientology definitely had a motive, a method opportunity and prior. Do they have any prior incidents like this? Well, if you search on www.lormanet.com from Arnie Lorma, if you uh, search on Spain and you look in the 90s, something very similar to this actually happened and Scientology got in a lot of trouble. In my humble opinion, I believe that Scientology had a lot to do with him kind of just so-called suicide killing himself. I really don't think this man killed himself at all. He was just a big pain in the ass for Scientology and was doing such a good job that they uh, didn't know what to do with him and they saw that opportunity and took it and it looked like a suicide. Uh, it's really sad that this whole thing happened and I wish the best for I guess his family, whoever is left over of this man whoever he left behind but uh, he was only 39 years old he lived very close to Clearwater Florida Tampa and uh, there you go that's pretty much what happened other thing is uh, there was a young lady who uh, butchered her whole family up her her sister and her father and her mother and she actually uh, was denied psychiatric medication from her parents because her parents were Scientologists <clears throat> and they you know declined her to take that uh, medication they said you can't take it and she was getting these bad symptoms of uh, you know having problems mental problems and of course they uh, didn't let her take that medication because they were good Scientologists and Scientology always likes to believe they are better than doctors which we know what happened with German Perkins uh, that man stabbed his mother 77 times, killed her on Aaron Hubbard's birthday, and, um, you know, said he heard voices, but Scientology gave him vitamins instead, didn't let him go to a psychiatrist, didn't let him get his medication, and he killed his mother, who was an OT4. So now we have another incident very similar with a girl who had similar issues to Jeremy Perkins, except uh, she successfully killed her father, killed her sister and slaughtered her mother up and cut her in a good bunch of little pieces I guess and cut her up pretty good but 
the good thing is the mother did survive. She didn't die. She got real lucky. She's still alive. But uh, this girl was not allowed to take her psychiatric medication because her parents let her move back in. So the girl moved back in with the parents temporarily. And uh, they told her she shouldn't take that. She can't take it. And so she freaked out. And days later, I guess she, uh, after three weeks of struggling with this big problem without taking her medication, she finally snapped and uh, um, didn't get the proper care she needed, didn't get to go to a psychiatrist, didn't take her medication, and killed two of her family members and attempted to kill her, her mother. Good job, Scientology. You continue to pretend like you're a doctor when you're not. Continue to think you guys are better than doctors. You guys aren't doctors. You guys do not know what you're doing. You guys harm families. In my humble opinion, you protect rapists and child molesters, and uh, you ruin people's lives every day. And you need to stop this crazy crap you guys are pulling. And Scientology kills too. And uh, so there you have it, people. A short, quick uh, update of the news I just recently kind of found out about. I just wanted to share it with everybody, and uh, I wanted to let Anonymous know you guys rock. You guys kick ass. I really appreciate you guys helping out, standing up to Scientology and their abuses, and uh, picketing and throwing those huge, big protests, and you guys are doing a great job, and I want to let everybody else know, please join us on March 15th, worldwide, I will be in San Francisco, California, with Lawrence Wallershine, the man who runs factnet.org, and I would really appreciate it if a lot of you people would come and join us. And especially anonymous, please come with all your friends. Uh, you guys really, really are cool, and I have a lot of respect for you guys for helping us out like this and doing the right thing. It takes a lot of guts to do that. So, uh, this is Tommy Gorman speaking, and I will talk to you guys later, and have a great night. See you later.